Hello to my fellow language learning friends. How are you? <laughs> to all of you English students out there who would like to connect with another English class brought to you by the most wonderful website in the world for learning a second language. Yes, it's it's verbling.com. <laughs> Incredible how you can connect with these classes 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What an opportunity for everyone in the world who has a good internet connection to <clears throat> take advantage of what verbling.com is offering, to take advantage of the opportunity of improving your English, bringing it up noticeably. And so that's what I'm hoping to help you with this hour. My name is Jeff Watson. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Jeff Watson. I am from Vancouver, Canada. And this hour, I am going to be using one of the podcasts produced by the British Broadcasting Corporation, which is a publicly funded broadcaster in Britain. And we are going to be talking about a subject that <clears throat> I'm sure everyone is going to be interested in, and that is translators. Not just translators that can translate words into another language, but amazing translators that can recognize your voice, translate it into another language, and then speak the words in the other language. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> we're, we're talking about me losing my job <laughs> when they develop this technology. And so right now I would like everyone please to download the document that I have prepared. It's uh, at the verbling.com website. It's called A8. So just below where you're waiting now is a class materials link or button. Please click on that so that you can download this document and open it up on your computer. That will allow you to read the text clearly and it will allow you to copy and paste the words into a translator so that you can understand the vocabulary that you have not seen before. And of course, I'm here to help you explain the use of all of these words. So, uh, now, while people, before people are joining, what I would like to do is to turn on the screen share so that people can see that here in all of the Verbling classes, it's important to keep your microphone muted. And so you keep your microphone turned off, uh, of course, un unless you are speaking. And then uh, that's the only tool that you need to use this hour. And so what I would like to do is when people join the class, and it's a little bit late, um, I would like to ask you uh, what translator you use to translate words, and do you think it works well for your language? And so when you're reading something in English, if you do you have a, a website, whether it's free or whether you have to pay for the service, uh, do you have this um, so that you can look up words? And at this point, I've been talking for a long time, and no one has joined. Now, that might be all right, but I'm just going to click on the verbling window. <clears throat> do I? Ah, I have someone joining. Okay, great. <laughs> I was getting worried there. So, uh, let's begin. Uh, and 
So hello, Mine. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you get settled. Hold on. I'll just turn off your microphone there. And we have Davidson who has joined. Hello, Davidson. How are you? Hello. Uh, where are you Hi. connecting from? Hello. I'm fine. Yes. And where are you connecting from? <laughs> I, I'm from Brazil. Okay, great. And so then, do you use a certain translator for translating words from Portuguese to English? So, so sometimes. Okay. And do you have, uh, is there a website that you can recommend? How do you translate words from Portuguese to English? Mm, when listening to music, uh, sometimes uh, that is only. Uh, sorry, so you listen to music? Yes. In in then you have the word in English. In English, listen to music in English. In the Brazil, I translate for Portuguese. Yeah, you translate the English words to Portuguese. And how do you do that? Do you use Google Translate, for example? Mm, sometimes. Okay, great. Sometimes. Thank you. Right, good. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go and, and say hello to Felipe. Felipe, are you there? Yes. Okay, so, uh, hi, Mine, are you there? <laughs> oh. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn off your microphone again, Mine, just because we're hearing lots of sound in, in the background. And in so, the background. And so, F Felipe. F Felipe. Yeah. Hello. So Felipe, what Hello. you need to do? Hello. So Felipe, what you need to do? Sorry, Mine, just wait one minute. Can you hear uh, me? Yes. So Felipe, if you can pause or close the verbling window, that would be good. That way you will uh, yeah. eliminate the, the echo in the background. So if you have the Google window open, you can actually close the verbling window or go to the video and pause it. All right. And so uh, I'd like to say hello to, well, it's, I don't think it's Alicia. Hello. Alicia. Now, you may need to turn off your video <laughs> so that your connection is better. Wow. We're having a lot of difficulties this hour. Mine, are you there? No, not yet. Yes, I am okay. here. All right. So, could you please tell us uh, what your native language is, and do you know a good translator between English and your native language? Uh, my native language is Turkish, and I don't know any good translator from Turkish to English or English to Turkish. Generally, when I try to Google Translate, it was it is so funny sentence structure. Okay, now what I'm talking about though, and and this is a good point because I don't necessarily believe in translating sentences or text. What I believe in personally, as a language learner, is to translate the individual words. Now, can you do that correctly? Um. E, this is another problem, I think, for foreigner because if you write it one word and they get the ten different meanings, and these meanings we cannot figure out which is the closest or in the sentence. In the sentence, um, sometimes it is difficult. Yes, I don't. Okay. I don't think so. This is a good translate from word to word. Oh, okay. All right. And now. Uh, but were you just talking about using an English dictionary? 
or a translator? Um, actually, last few years, I just use the English English dictionary, not okay. translator. That oh. is a, a little bit problem. I know the word, I know the meaning, but I cannot ah. translate my language. Okay. All right. That's great. That's that's very interesting. You've you've already mentioned that to me, but thanks for talking about that again. And I wanted to say hello to Felipe. Are are you there, Felipe? Yes, I am great. here. Great. Uh, where are you connecting from? I am. I am from Chile. Ah, good. Uh, uh, so I am, am I. I am. Yes, so <laughs> I far away. Santiago. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> And so, are you uh, are you living in Santiago? I live in Santiago. Yes. And so, do you have a ah, uh, a, a website that you use for translating between Spanish and English? Uh, and now I'm studying translation at university. Okay. This is my second year. Um, well, for me. <laughs> Sorry, please go ahead. I tried uh, to choose my knowledge because in my teachers say, says uh, you you don't have to use trans any translator. Uh, well, tra the the task depend on the context. Okay, sure. Well, um, I mean that, that's okay. it. Okay, well the context is extremely important. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a big fan. I am a big supporter of translation. But, but with a lot of thinking, not just translating and, and leaving it. There's a lot of effort to, to using translation, but I think that's a really good way to learn new vocabulary. But anyways, great, thank you. And uh, I'll be looking forward to hearing more comments from you. Uh, Nihan, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Hi. So please tell us what your native language is and what do you use to uh, translate? Um, my native language is Turkish, of course. Uh, I'm connecting from Turkey. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the work, uh, I translate to English to Turkish to my boss. And, and but how do you do it? Uh, what what website or what yes. piece of software uh, I, do you use? Uh, uh, I use some kind of dictionaries uh, like Cambridge Dictionary, Longman Dictionary, or uh, the best one, uh, Macmillan Dictionary. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I try to use uh, the meanings uh, English to English. Uh, because uh, if I don't uh, use English uh, definition, uh, I can't remember the word uh, then. And uh, but uh, our translation is about uh, always technical translation about medical devices. Uh, okay. For uh, two rank we ha we have used uh, for the uh, medical uh, definition. Mm -hmm. Two rank. Oh, okay, so sorry, is that a, is that a website? Yep, okay. it's a very useful website. Oops, we've lost her connection, so she'll be back. And um, is it uh, Alicia? Mm. <laughs> Hello, girl. Yes, uh, what is How your name? You? Gustavo. Gustavo. Gustavo, okay, welcome. Yeah. And, and where, where are you connecting Thanks. from? Um, I I learn in uh, I learn in listen uh, now. Good. Now I, I, I speak a little English. Okay, that's fine. Where are you Sorry. from? What country are you from? Yeah, uh, my city is Mar del Plata, into the province Buenos Aires, Argentina. Okay, and so you speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what website or what dictionaries or what mm -hmm. software do you use to ah. translate between Spanish and English? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm use a dictionary. 
uh, uh, Spanish uh, to English or yeah. or English to English uh, uh, throughout um, Oxford Dictionary. Okay, but you use a paper dictionary. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Better. All right. All right. Great. Yeah. Right, pa thank you. Paper, pen, and dictionary. No, oh, no, okay. no software. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Welcome. In, welcome. In the meetings. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. And so, welcome everyone. Let's let's get started uh, now. The thank the goal for this lesson is to read the transcript produced by the BBC and answer all yeah. of your questions and then we're going to listen to the podcast and then we should have some time to make comments and ask questions after and so the document is called A8 so if you can please download this from the uh, website, from the Verbling website, A8. And it's better for you, usually, for students to read. And I'm just going to put the document on the screen share. And so, uh, Gustavo, could you please oh. begin reading? Yeah, yeah. I, I use BBC Learning English. Good. Six minute English. Yeah. So please, if you could read this text for us. Yeah, and Gustavo, could you could you please read it yeah. out loud? Yeah, uh, BBC Learning English, six minute English, uh, twenty five October. Don't uh, mean uh, <laughs> two thousand. Uh, 12, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the title? Yeah, the uh, screen. Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. Screen. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, this I, is I, where this is where it's I best can, if if students uh, can download the document. Mine has put the direct link to the document. Yeah. Uh, oh. in the Verbling chat box. So then yeah. you, you won't have the problem with the share screen. Just let me share the, the way that we read the date in English. We say the 25th of October 2012. Uh, October. Yeah. So often we read it differently from the way that it is spelled. So, right, the way that it is written. And so the name of this podcast is Speak Any Language Instantly, The Dream of Every Language Student. <laughs> okay. And so uh, what I'm going to go is to Davidson. Davidson, could you please read this first selection of text for us? Yeah. Hello, and welcome to Sex Minute English from BCC Lini English Day program in which we talk about about a story in the news and learning some vocabulary while we're doing it. I am here and joining me today is Jen. Hi there, Jen. Continue? Yes, please. This is a dialogue between two people. So please go ahead. Okay. Hi, Neil. Neil. Now, this sound like very strangling. Struggling. Language student struggling. Struggling. Strug. What? Struggling. Struggling. Language students dream. Jen. A piece of technology which could put in and two hours and hours of story. Okay, and I'll get you to stop there. So what we're talking about is a computer program that instantly translates between two languages. So this is the dream of every language student and a piece of technology that could 
eliminate the need to do all of the studying of, of languages. All right, great. And Davidson, just quickly, could you please, uh, I'm going to turn off the screen share, could you please move your microphone further away from your mouth? We can hear you breathing. Davidson? Hello. Your microphone? I don't, I don't listen. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Please move your microphone away from your mouth. Uh, okay. Yeah, a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, a little bit. Great. Okay. And Felipe, I'm going to get you to continue reading, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, it sounds like. It sounds like. It sounds like something from science and fiction. Jen, machine which allows you to speak any language in the world instantly. Neil, okay, well not quite, but we are talking about an app, a piece of software common on smartphones, developed in Japan. This app allows you to connect conversation with um, a person is speaking in different language, translated in real time. In other words, instantly. Okay, and I'll get you to stop there because this is obviously important. And so let's let's talk about what this means. Could someone please repeat the information uh, in this? Uh, continue. No, uh, what, what I would like is for people to repeat the information in the text that was just read. Ah, <clears throat> they okay. discover um, a new app for the smartphone and development uh, in Japan. And these okay. uh, apps, um, you can use conversation uh, with another people when you in, in with another people, yeah, and the uh, the app translates uh, the language, um, even though you don't know this language, but uh, at the same time translates the script for things like that. Yeah, and and so, uh, but this is on a smartphone, and so. Like, what does it do? What does the machine do? You you explain that all very well, Mine. <clears throat> I think uh, I saw the app on yeah? TV. Yeah? Uh, okay. Right. I think uh, the uh, two girls, they are tourists and they speak, they try to speak French. They say the English and then the app translates the French and then they, um, they, um, listen, they give the words to sell a person to the app translate to French automatically. Yeah, okay, automatically in real time. This is the idea. So it instantly, uh, and so this is what we're talking about. I, I don't have my cell phone here. I'm speaking into my cell phone. I speak in, in English and it instantly translates and reproduces my voice in another language instantly. That's the idea. And it's getting close. It's getting close, this technology. So uh, it sounds amazing. And I guess it will put me out of work. <laughs> but so, Jeff, yeah. there is a, uh, some kind of difficulties uh, because uh, when translating the words uh, it's uh, translate the first meaning and yes. when you translate the sentences it could be very difficult to uh, uh, to sh know the uh, correct meaning I think. Correct, yes absolutely but the computers are becoming much better at translating and we'll, we'll have an idea. I have some more information that sort of shows how many mistakes the computers are making. 
And so, great. Uh, I'm sorry, is it, uh, uh, whose turn is it to read? Is it uh, Mine? My turn, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Jen. Um, this could put us out of a job. Okay, this could put us out of a job, job mail. Now, come on, it must be time for a language-related quiz. Mail. Yes, that is exactly what we'll do now. I want to know how many languages are there in the world. Is it about 100, about 1,000, about 6,000? Okay, so does anyone have a guess? Does anyone know this? How many different languages are there in the world? 6,000. 6,000? Yeah, okay. So. Does anybody else Six have an opinion? More? 6,000. Yes, okay. All right. I think everybody knows this. That's good. Let's continue. Let's see what Jen says. Please continue, Mine. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, well, I think there are a lot of, but maybe not 6,000. So I will go for about 1,000. Okay. Well, we will find out as ever at, at the end of the program. Back now to our app. Jan, this of course isn't the only institute. Uh, translation technology in the world. Okay. Nail. And sorry, I'm going to stop yes. you there. So great. All right. So we're talking about instant translation technology and we're talking about an app I, I put the word application I think app is short for application like a computer program and so it's the one developed in Japan is not the only one and so let's move on uh, Moa are you there yes I'm here where, where are you connecting from I'm from Morocco. Okay, welcome. Could you please read this for us? Uh, instant translation technology? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, could you begin with Neil? Okay. No, Google has something. Okay, Neil. No, Google has something similar, though it's less advanced than this Japanese app. Listen to the first part. Of a report from the BBC correspondent, Richard Tyler. How does the Google technology work? BBC correspondent Richard Tyler. You simply talk into your smartphone that then sends to the sent to the server from Google, which does real-time voice recognition and then machine translation on it and then that data is sent back to your phone either as a script or if you pay a little bit extra in terms of data charges as a voice file. Okay, now, and so I'll get you to stop there. Let's take a look at this and we're, we're doing two things. You want to understand the information and then you want to practice the vocabulary because this is useful vocabulary, all right? And so can we point out some of the important sentences or important phrases, please? Are you talking to me? I'm uh, Not just you, sorry, uh, but you can, if you have an idea, Moa, go ahead. But any student, please, you can turn on your microphone and point out something to the class. What did the BBC correspondent say? Hello? Anyone there? <laughs> I'm here, but I don't have uh, any idea. Well, uh, but what? Uh, and so this is where I need help from students. So what don't you understand? Uh, tell me what you don't understand in the sentence. And I can help you. Like uh, voice recognition. Okay. So what is voice recognition? Does anybody know? Mm, yes. Can, can you explain it? 
May maybe the system uh, recognize your voice instantly. Yes. Oh, okay, no, but what does that mean? Uh, I actually, I do not like typing. I hate it. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, I hate typing. So I am now using Microsoft voice recognition. So if I want to write something, what I do is I put on my microphone and I speak into the computer. The computer listens to my voice and understands it and writes down what I'm saying. And it's very accurate. That's really? what voice recognition is. The computer, I sit here like this <laughs> and I speak. Hello, my name is Jeff. And the computer writes down, hello, my name is Jeff. And then I have to say things like, period. Or maybe I would say, hello, comma, my name is Jeff, period. Space. Wow. New line. And it mm. writes. So voice recognition takes the person's voice and changes it to text. Okay, that's step number one. What else, what else do we need to understand here? Teacher. Yes. Um, they computer uh, translate the voice they uh, who using the PC or no? Yes. In in the podcast we are talking about a smartphone. Uh, okay. okay. And so, so first the first step the first step is voice recognition. Mm. The computer understands what the person is saying and writes it down. Then you have machine translation. I understand. Okay, what is machine translation? Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand. Good, okay. Good. And okay. But to the other students, to practice your English, what is machine translation? Yeah. To translate the text. Yes. To, to another uh, language. Okay, good. Yes. And then yes. it will send it back to you. If you pay more, you, oh. they will send voice files. Good. And so has everyone heard the computer reading text? Yes. Has everyone heard text mm -hmm. being read out loud by a computer? Yes, yes yep. I heard that. Like, Hello, my name is yep. Jeff. Yeah, okay. Yep. That, all right. Uh, so this I, is it. I use it uh, very usually because uh, when I want to uh, learn a new word uh, and I put it uh, uh, many websites uh, they can do it text to uh, speech and uh, I um, the definition uh, is uh, written by the uh, um, by by the mechanical uh, voices yeah it's it's read by the computer yep read and it's very it's, it's, usable yeah. yes okay I think it's good yeah I I can share my uh, best uh, text to speech uh, link okay text to speech it changes written text to speech computer generated speech yeah Mine? also they have an option american accent england accent <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yep. Uh, a Many woman's options. voice a man's voice yes excellent yep. great okay so let's let's continue good work i know this is difficult to understand but let's keep going. And so, Nihan, could you please read this for us? Yep. Neil, uh, he says... Pardon. You said Neil? Neil, he says... That, that's where you start. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Nihan. Neil, he says, 
when you talk into your uh, smartphone is sent to the server a central computer which other computers get their information from Jen, the server does real-time translation and then sends back a text or voice file Neil so you read the translation or if you pay a little bit more listen to your translations sent as an audio recording Jen, amazing stuff yeah, please continue. Neil, indeed, but this new app, uh, application in Japan, developed by the company NTT Docomo, goes even further. Okay, Jeez, I'll, that, I'll stop here. Okay. Sorry, I'll stop you here. So this is amazing. It's very good. All right. And, but it goes even further. It, it does more. So let's, let's find out what it does. Let's find out what it does. Okay, and I'm going to go back to Gustavo. Could you please uh, continue reading, Gustavo? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jen, that's right. With this technology, you can have an actual conversation with someone on the other side of the world, speaking a different language to the one which is coming out, uh, sorry, is coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Nail, incredible. Now listen to the second part of the report from the BBC Richard Taylor. Okay, and I'll get you to stop there. And so you're, you can have a conversation. This application uh, creates a translated conversation. Okay, and actual in English means a real conversation uh, a yeah. real uh, conversation all right so let's hear what the BBC correspondent says and so Davidson could you read this for us please yeah uh, sorry I, I'd like to go on to Davidson booths mm, they have actual take they Taken conceptual and taking taken they conceptual and applied applied so you are making a phone call to somebody from Japan in Japan Japanese on the other side for the world for example in Brighton, Britain, Britain, it will take that Japanese voice to the real time machine. Oh my god. I yeah, am, sorry. Okay. I'm. Mm, Translation. No, it's the, it's the screen. It's better if students download the document and open the document on their computer, but can you see it now, Davidson? Mm. On the server, copy of seconds later, it would bring to back down to you right. in English, or at least that's the idea. Okay, good. Idea. And so having a conversation with someone on the other side of the world. Okay, mm. great. Oh. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, Felipe, are you ready? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, and again, Felipe, if you can move your microphone further away from your mouth. Uh, we're hearing okay, a lot of the breathing noises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Neil, so the difference is that this app allows people to speak to foreigners in real time. With this slight pause while the real time translation takes place. Jen, so which language does it convert? Languages. Languages. Does it convert? Uh, Neil, at the moment at the moment uh, Japanese to English, Mandarin and Korean, but more are allowed to follow. Jen, 
I suppose the big question is how accurate is the translation? Neil, yes, that is the big question. The BBC's Richard Taylor tried, tried it out with the help of a Japanese tran translator. What did he ask and how good does the translator think this app is? Okay, let's stop there. So what are we going to hear? Uh, what, what does it translate? What's, what are the ideas here? The accurate translation. The accurate, yeah. Right, okay, so is it accurate? <clears throat> this is the big question, right? This is the important question. How accurate is it? And so how are they going to try it out? How are they going to test it? This is important. This is they're going to do a demonstration. They're going to test out how well the application works. So how are they doing that? They have some help. They use the Japanese translator. Yeah, and and Mine, I th you need to uh, turn up your volume. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, they use the help um, a Japanese translator, their okay. own language. Right. So this is a person. Yes? Everybody yeah. understands? A Japanese translator means a person who yes. can translate from... Yes. Interpreter. An interpreter. Okay. Interpret yeah. Yes? Okay? Yeah. All right, great. And so they're going to use the phone, and with the help of a Japanese translator, they're going to see how well it works. Okay? So let's, and remember, we're going to listen to this. So uh, let's, let's continue here. And so, sorry, uh, who's, whose turn is it? <laughs> Where are we? Uh, is it uh, Davidson? I think you read. Uh, Felipe, you read? And yes. so we have someone new. Glenda, are you there, Glenda? I, I'm sorry, we cannot hear you, Glenda. And so, Mine, could you read this, please? Okay. Um, hello, how are you? Are there any good restaurants around here? Smartphone Japanese replay. Reporter, how well did that do? As a translator, first of all, Japanese translator, well, it is understandable, but it is not perfect, Neil. The reporter asked if there is a good restaurant nearby, Jan, and the Japanese translator says the app was understandable, but not perfect. Neil. Okay, sorry, I'm going to get you to stop there. All right, and so what were the results of the test? How good was the translation? It's not perfect, but understandable. Okay. So not perfect, but the person could understand it. Okay. And, and that's pretty good uh, because uh, the reporter asked, what did the reporter say exactly? What were his Where? exact words? Where is yeah. The... Are there any good restaurants around here? And so... That's a very normal native speaker phrase. And just, we've got a lot of noise coming from someone. Could everyone please turn off, uh, keep their microphones turned off, please, to, to eliminate the background noise? And so, are there any good restaurants nearby? This is a natural phrase. So good. Okay, so let's continue. And let's, I'm going to move this down a bit. Do people understand? Would people like to ask questions? Moa, could you go ahead, please? Okay. And I, I'm sorry, I need everyone to turn off their microphones, please. Thank you. 
Can I stop now? Yeah. yeah, but sorry, I just... Yeah, go ahead, please, Moa. Okay, now, is this technology going to sweep the world? I wonder, Jane, where there are some other companies hot on the heels of Japanese company NTT Docomo, for example, Francis Alcatel Lucent is developing a river project which will operate on land lines. Land lines. Land lines. Nail. And Microsoft is working on something it's calling the translating telephone. Now the question I want to ask you, Jim, is do you think this will put an end to language learning forever? Jim? Okay, now sorry. I'm going to get you to stop there. All right. Yes. So, who are the competitors? Who who is developing this technology? Can you give me a list of the people and companies that Entity. are developing this technology? Entity Docomo. Uh, sorry. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. This is the Japanese company. Yes. Okay, great. Alcatel. Yeah, and where are they from? France. France. Okay, France. good. France is uh, Alcatel Lucent. Okay, so they're developing a rival product, which means it's going to compete. But mm -hmm. what's different about it? Landlines. Landlines. Home phones. That's right. It will work on your home telephone. And who else is involved? Microsoft. <laughs> okay, great. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft. we know that... Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft. And we know that Google has yeah. something. And so lots of people working on this translation. So, do you think that this technology will put an end to language learning forever? No. Nope. What do you think? <laughs> really? Okay. Why? Because yeah, the... in the language, many synonyms are exist, and uh, maybe it's a little simple words uh, can be translated, but uh, more complicated texts cannot be translated accurately. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, you're saying that interpreters uh, could lose their jobs. Now, I think we use the word translators, but you, do you know, <laughs> do you know the word interpreters? I, I thought interpreters viewed sign language, but anyways, sorry, Nihan, let, let's move on. What, what do the other people think? Do they think computer translation will take over from language learning? I don't think so. Because okay. In my opinion, language is like an ocean. Translator, especially mechanic translator, maybe they can include 25% or 30 or the optimistic. 50%. Okay. The other All right. person uh, need the human being, need the okay. thinking, need the um, structure, the other things. That is the okay, needs a, a thinking human being. Mm -hmm. All right, someone else? Would you like to make a comment? This is your chance to practice your English. <laughs> Just turn on your microphone. Yes, Felipe? Uh, what, yes, what do you think? About the... Um, the Machine translator machine. Yes, computer translation. Uh, we can call computer it computer translator. Whatever. Um, mm -hmm. For me, um, it, it couldn't. It could be a use useful when you are lost. When you're oh. when you're finding some some word, uh, but uh, I. When you are looking we, for a word? When we're looking for, um, for a word, but uh, I said uh, at the, when we began that the important thing is the context because okay. uh, yep. uh, if, I, if I translate uh, from 
from English to Spanish, there are some uh, words that are different in Spanish. The, um, uh, a be, be a translator is very difficult. Okay, um, good. All right, thank you. And someone else, a comment? Yes. Davidson? Yeah, or, or sorry, who is that? Me, Moa. Ah, Moa, go ahead, please. And could everyone else please turn off their microphones? If everyone please can turn off their microphones, please. Thank you. That's great. Moa? We can, we can use this machine just uh, like a meeting or something like that. But we can't use it like on the streets because uh, we have an, a real language. We can talk in like uh, with, uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Well, okay, no, but that's a good point. You can't live your life with a machine, but okay, it depends how fast it is. I, I want to say like uh, we have a language and like a street language. Like okay. Ah, yes. Some words. Okay, it will not understand jargon or slang, yes. uh, street language. Uh, okay, uh, great. Uh, and, we, sorry, I wanted to go on to Davidson. He wanted to make a comment. Yes. Davidson? Davidson, are you there? Would you like to make a comment? Hello. Would you like to say something? Would you like to make a comment? Okay, I, I, I don't think so. Okay, that's fine, Davidson. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, okay. And so let's, let's bring up our uh, document again. Those were good comments. Jeff. Uh, yes. I'll uh, I want to give an example to you. Uh, recently, sure. uh, we uh, we uh, we read an email from Taiwan, and my boss um, uh, doesn't know English. Uh, he uses the Google Translate, and uh, he, uh, the other side said, uh, "What is your quotation?" You know, yeah. uh -huh. uh, they ask about. Mm -hmm. Uh, they ask about price, but uh, my boss said um, uh, the Google Translate um, uh, translated the first meaning. Uh, it's kind of expert, or uh, okay. somebody yes. say something. Uh, uh, we uh, did it. A quotation is the same word, and he said, uh, "What do they want? Uh, what kind of quotation they want?" Yeah. It's okay. A no, Turkish I understand. Proverb. Yeah. Okay. I I have seen the mistakes that translators make, and so okay, good, excellent, thank you. All right, and and so uh, <clears throat> I I don't remember whose turn it is. <laughs> uh, now let me see, whose whose turn is it to read? Sorry, help me. I've lost track. Mm -mm, no. I don't know. Who read last time? Me. Who I. was this? Moa? Moa, I, I read last oh, time. Oh, oh, oh. You read last time? Okay. Nihan, could you read this for us, please? Okay. Uh, Jen, uh, well, I hope not. I think these types of technologies are always helpful, but nothing will ever replace learning a language. I know I am by, Bias. but uh, speaking... Uh, could you please repeat it? Biased? Uh, biased. I'm biased. Uh, but speaking a foreign language is one of life's great pleasures. Nail. And I agree with you, but of course I would because it's my job. <laughs> okay, good. So mm -hmm. they do not want this technology to be perfect. They do not want to lose their jobs. All right. And speaking a foreign language, I, I think, is a very enjoyable uh, experience. Who is that? Me. Moa, what, yes. What does it mean, I'm biased? Ah, good. That means that this person uh, is on one side of the opinion. So that means that Jen loves learning languages, she loves teaching languages, and so that means 
that she is going to have a strong opinion in favor of learning languages, not replacing it with technology. Does that make yeah. sense? Yes, I understand. My she is biased. She is to one side. She has a strong opinion to one side. So her answer is is obvious. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Great. No, but thank you for your uh, thank you for your question. And then let's go to uh, Gustavo. Could you read this for us, please? Yeah, sure. Shen, before, sorry, I, I, I can't read. Okay, now, just, and then quickly, Gustavo, if you can download the document, do you understand what yeah. we mean? Yeah. yeah. Then if you open it up on your computer, you can see it clearly. And so, Amir, are you there? No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. It disappeared in the screen. Okay, but sorry, uh, Gustavo, I, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, uh, Amir, Amir, are you there? Yes. Yes. Could you read this for us, please? Okay. Mel, Mel and I agree with you, but of course I would, I would because it's my job. Jen, before we go, now aren't you going to give the answer? To that quiz. Neil, okay, yes, I wanted to know how, how many languages there, there are in the world. Is that about 100, uh, uh, B about uh, 1000, C about uh, 6000? Then, and I said B about 1000. One, Yes, Amir, go ahead, Nell, please. Mm -hmm. And you are, and Neil, and Neil, and you are, you are wrong. I, I know you speak about uh, 1,000 language again, but the answer is about 6,000. Okay. Jen, wow. And so she was surprised. All right, and so let's listen to the podcast. And uh, what I'm going to do is to use my iPod to play the podcast for you and I hope that you can follow the transcript so that you are reading the transcript and listening to the audio podcast. So enjoy. Hello and welcome to Six Minute English from BBC Learning English, the program in which we talk about a story in the news and learn some vocabulary while we're doing it. I'm Neil and joining me today is Jen. Hi there, Jen. Hi, Neil. Now, this sounds like every struggling language student's dream. A piece of technology which could put an end to hours and hours of study. It sounds like something from science fiction. A machine which allows you to speak any language in the world instantly. OK, well, not quite, but we are talking about an app, a piece of software common on smartphones developed in Japan. This app allows you to have conversations with another person speaking in a different language translated in real time. In other words, instantly. This could put us out of a job, Neil. Now, come on, it must be time for a language-related quiz. Yes, that's exactly what we will do now. I want to know how many languages there are in the world. Is it A, about a hundred, B, about a thousand, or C, about six thousand? Well, I think there are a lot, but maybe not six thousand, so I'll go for B, about one thousand. OK, well, we will find out, as ever, at the end of the programme. Back now to our app. Now, this, of course, isn't the only instant translation technology in the world. No, Google have something similar, though it's less advanced than this Japanese app. Listen to the first part of a report from the BBC's correspondent, Richard Taylor. How does the Google technology work? You simply talk into your smartphone. That's then sent to the server uh, from 
from Google, which does real-time voice recognition and then machine translation on it. And then that data is sent back to your phone, either as a script or if you pay a little bit extra in terms of data charges, as a voice file. He says when you talk into your smartphone, it's sent to the server, a central computer which other computers get their information from. The server does real-time translation and then sends back a text or voice file. So you read the translation or, if you pay a little bit more, listen to a translation sent as an audio recording. Amazing stuff. Indeed. But this new app in Japan, developed by the company NTT Docomo, goes even further. That's right. With this technology, you can have an actual conversation with someone on the other side of the world, speaking a different language to the one which is coming out of your mouth. Incredible. Now listen to the second part of the report from the BBC's Richard Taylor. But they've actually taken the concept and applied it to normal voice calls. So you're making a phone call to somebody from Japan in Japanese, the other side of the world, for example, in Britain. It will take that Japanese voice, do the real-time machine translation on the server. A couple of seconds later, it would bring it back down to you in English, or at least that's the idea. So the difference is that this app allows people to speak to foreigners in real time with a slight pause while the real-time translation takes place. So which languages does it convert? At the moment, Japanese to English, Mandarin and Korean, but more are to follow. I suppose the big question is, how accurate is the translation? Yes, that is the big question. The BBC's Richard Taylor tried it out with the help of a Japanese translator. What did he ask and how good does the translator think the app is? Hello, how are you? Are there any good restaurants around here? How well did that do as a, as a translation, first of all? Well, it's understandable, but... I'm sorry, everybody. I, I think that there's been an interruption in the audio with the verbling site uh, because we have gone over time <laughs> and so what I'll have to do is to say to people uh, if you would like to listen to the rest of the podcast you can find it at the BBC Learning English website so I have to go and teach again right away excellent work good work with your reading your pronunciation and your listening so I hope to see you soon